Assalamu alaikum dear students and welcome back. Today we will talk about some of the basics of effective writing and I will be sharing uh, some tips with you that will help you out in order to improve your writing in any medium. There are basically five tips that I'm going to share with you. The first tip is that you have to put the reader first. The second tip is that you should use simple words and short sentences. The third tip is that you have to use jargons, you know, which is the special vocabulary only when it is necessary. And you should write with verbs and nouns to make your writing active. And then the last tip is that you have to do formatting to improve readability. You have to revise your content so that it, it is readable and the reader uh, do not feel any kind of difficulty uh, while reading the content. Now let's talk about all of these tips one by one. The first key is that you have to put the reader first. You should remember this that communication is basically uh, all about understanding. So whenever you are writing, write to express, not to impress. And you should be using words that readers can picture, that readers can understand. And you have to tie in to the reader's experience. Instead of making it self-centered, you should be actually projecting what reader wants to know. And if you are projecting the reader's experience in your writing, then reader will like it and the more chances are that you will be able to communicate your point of view in a very effective way. And then WIF, what is, uh, what's in it for me? Because uh, that's a technique, that's a psychological technique because whenever you are speaking or whenever you are writing, so the first question that your listener or reader asks is that what's in it for me? Mujhe kya fayda hoga isse? So you have to always consider this, you have to put the reader first. The second key is that you have to use simple words and short sentences. Let's look, let's have a look at this example. Per our conversation, I am enclosing herewith a remittance of $25 for the balance due on my account. That's one way of saying 18 words. <coughs> you can convey the same message by saying as we discussed, here is the $25 remaining on my account. That is uh, the same message in 11 words. And here is the $25 remaining on my account. The same message is conveyed in eight words. Now you can see it by yourself that the last statement that is easy to read, that is simple and it is, uh, it can be easily uh, and uh, comparatively uh, understood in a better way, right? Let's have a look at another example as pertaining to the question of whether or not to construct a new storage facility, corporate management will ascertain the appropriateness of such an issue in the near future. This is one way of saying and the same message can be conveyed uh, like this. Management will decide next week whether to build a new storage facility. Now the second, second uh, in, the, in the second line, the same message is conveyed using simple, simple words and simple expression and you can see it by yourself that the second uh, uh, second message it is more comprehensible it is more easy to read and it is more easy to understand as well now the tip is that you have to avoid wordy prepositional phrases like in the amount of in order to due to the fact that instead of saying in the amount of you can simply say for Instead of saying in order to, you can simply say to. Instead of saying due to the fact that, you can simply say because. Instead of saying in the in the event that, you can simply say if. Instead of saying during the time that, you can say when or while. And the third tip is that you have to use jargons only when it is necessary. Now what is a jargon? Jargon is basically the specialized vocabulary that is used in a specific field or in a specific discipline. Now, the new uh, FMIS system from Gro Global provides WAR, TME, NAV, uh, re uh, re redundancy as well as enhanced GPS capability. Now, uh, instead of using these kind of jargons, which may not be easily understandable for everyone, you can say Global's new flight management system provides several ways to navigate your airplane, including the last, the, the latest in satellite navigation. Now let's have a look at another example. While the new ST7000 provides extensive memory and is 
extremely uh, user compatible it lacks the requisite capacity for calculating at a high a high rate of speed so you can simply say that our computer system is easy to use and has enough memory but it is too slow right okay let's have a look at some other examples demand side capacity combined with the transmission wheeling contracts and local generation resources will be able to meet local demand and spinning reserve requirements for the next five years Achha. Uh, SMUD will be able to save and provide enough power to meet local needs for the next five years. So instead of using these kind of uh, vocabulary, you should be actually using the, uh, the easy vocabulary. Now, uh, the fifth tip is that you have to write with verbs and nouns. You, you should be using the active voice and uh, you, should, you should be knowing that when it is okay to use the passive voice. Let's have a look at another example. The company sells insurance. Now, uh, not, you know, you should be using these kind of sentences that the company sells insurance instead of saying that insurance is sold by the company. And the construction crew repaired the road. This is, this is what you should be saying in active voice instead of saying that the road was repaired by the construction company. And tests showed the new material did not wear well instead of saying uh, when tests were run, it was discovered that uh, good wear is not exhibited by the new material. So you should be knowing when to use the active voice and when to use the passive voice. Let's have a look at uh, another example of right verb uh, and right noun. So you should be using the, the, the right verb and the right noun uh, so that you can, you can create an impact of uh, your piece of writing. Mr. Johnson ran quickly across the four-lane street, almost falling down when he stepped in a large hole in the concrete. Now, instead of uh, writing ran quickly across the four-lane street, you can simply say that Mr. Johnson sprinted across the boulevard. And instead of saying that almost falling down, you can sim simply say Mr. Jo uh, Johnson uh, sprinted across the, uh, the, the boulevard, stumbling when he stepped in a uh, pothole instead of saying a la large hole in the concrete you can simply say in a pothole so you should be using the right verbs and right nouns to convey the message and the fifth key is that you should format the document in order to improve the readability you, you can use lists bullets charts tables indents italics bolds headings and subheadings to make your writing clear and you can uh, apply that 100 word rule as well that anything that can be said in 100 words, you should not be using more than 100 words. Now, before you begin, uh, you know, you have to plan uh, all of your document, then you have to organize, and after that, you have to write. And before you begin, you should know that who is the audience, and what is the purpose of the message, and how will the reader use the information, right? And as you begin, you should be assembling all the useful information that you will require and you have to determine what is important and you have to choose what to leave out and you should uh, you should be grouping the information in a very logical way and there are four ways that you can use in order to organize the message you can divide things according to different categories you can use the comparison and contrast uh, techniques you can use the cause and effect or you can go for the problem analysis solution as well and in terms of division you should start with the main idea and then you should discuss the parts for example acme corporation faces four problems that th threaten its uh, uh, competitiveness outrated market plan poor uh, service record high prices and low morale so first you should uh, state the main idea and then you can go for the different parts and in terms of comparison and contrast you can use uh, familiar uh, to explain unfamiliar like if you want to talk about uh, you know the urban life you can compare it with the rural life and the people will understand that and you can put the conclusion up front you can start with the conclusion and then you can go go on into the detail for example if we expand it uh, if we expand in the west we will face the same challenges as we did in expanding to the south uh, lack of identity, poor distribution, short uh, P-term cash flow uh, problem, and untrained labor force. So you can you can uh, you can in the very beginning you can put the the conclusion as well. And in terms of problem analysis, like first the problem, 
you state the problem then you do the analysis and then you come up for the solution so you can find a straightforward way to offer the recommendations for example the shipping dogs inability to ship uh, products uh, fast enough results from an inefficient tracking system the solution to this is invest in a new si computer system retain the staff retrain the staff uh, retrain the staff and inform customers of realistic shipping times and budget for uh, overtime to meet uh, peak demands so this is this is how you can uh, state the problem first and then you can do the analysis and then you can suggest some solutions in the in terms of cause and effect you can present a clear uh, way analysis like a what is the relationship between a and b a b c and d or a b c and a b c and then uh, a b c d and that is the effect so uh, you know you can uh, you can follow any of the techniques, any of these three techniques. Uh, for example, reorganizing the marketing department. Now that is the cause and what will be the effect? Will cause two benefits and one problem. So what are the two benefits? Improved accountability and better communication and the problem is poorer service to industrial customers. So what you need to do is that you need to first develop an outline and then you have to write and when you are writing you should write the easiest part first and then you should develop major sections one at a time and you know you, you have to uh, do the introduction for the main ideas as well and the main points should be very uh, uh, you should uh, the main points should be should be narrated in the very beginning of the paragraph in the in the beginning of the first paragraph and you can uh, turn off your internal editor as well so that you can actually gauge yourself and you can uh, you can test your ability to write as well so thank you for watching and check the description for the full course take care of yourself see you in another lecture khuda hafiz